Hey Stamper, it's Gator again, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator for Stampin' Up! And this is my blog. Um, I went to our uh, Lidl's, now Aldi today, and oh my gosh, I fell in love with the box. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I also its content. I'm going to show you the box. Um, how sweet is it? Salted caramel truffles. Oh, and they are delicious, by the way. Absolutely delicious. What a gorgeous box. Isn't that sweet? I love it. So, I opened it up. Uh, there's a li little ribbon around the back as well. And this come off. And this is how it opens up. Oh my God, it is so cute. And as you can tell, I'm going to have a munch at my truffles. Oh, they are, ah, they've got salty caramel in the inside. Oh my God. I wish we did you all want to try the absolutely divine. So, I came home and deconstructed this box as best I could. <laughs> and uh, I came up with my version of this beautiful, beautiful box. And it's stunning. I love this. I felt that, well, like I say, I bought it just for the box. But I do enjoy the content as well, so... Um, it wraps around a couple of times and it, it was tied in a bow on the front. Absolutely wonderful. So, we're actually going to try and make this box. Ooh, scary thought. <laughs> I know, but this is my version of the box. Oh, wow. It, it's a little bit skew if on that one side, but I think I've rectified that now. But look at this. I had some 3x3 three three paper hanging around in DSP, so I matted it then with some three and a half by three and a half cherry cobbler and I used our cherry cobbler ribbon but I just put it on off like that's my where my cock up is but I've rectified it now I think but uh yeah and I glued the side oh my gosh it's just the cutest little thing you've ever seen I love it it does take two sheets of um card uh, a4 card but it's worth it I think and look at that oops you can get inside and there's the contents of your box. And the box actually is, is about um, three and three quarters by three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So let me just move it that way. Yeah, absolutely good size little box. You could get makeup in there. I put some of that um, stringy stuff I showed you that's coming out in the new catalogue. Let me just grab the bag, see if, if you remember. The Ready Shreddy, I think it's called. Yeah, Ready Shreddy. Ah, and you can put some of this in and then fill it with something beautiful. A nice can, uh, Yankee candle would look beautiful in there, but you could fill it with that. It's absolutely wonderful. I love it. And like I say, this is my first attempt, this is as well. So, um, not too bad, actually. Put the tape on the wrong side, but that's only on the inside. This is my protocol. Prototype, should I say, not protocol. And after the boo boobs I made on last night's video without regarding me, oh my word, I don't think I've done too bad considering. But isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely love it. Inspired by my chocolates from Lidl's. Mm. <laughs> so I'm going to use the same again. I'm going to use crumb cake. And, uh, yeah, you need just two A4 sheets. That's it. And we're going to do some scoring. And, whoops, we're going to score on the short side. Let me have a look at my measurements here. On the short side, we're going to score at half inch. And please, pay, you've got to pay really good attention to these, otherwise it just goes off. And four and one eighth. And seven and three quarters. Because that gives you then one, two, four. Yeah, that gives you your half inch at this end as well. Then we're going to turn it to the long side. 
and we're going to score at one and three quarters, three and a half, five and three eighths, one, two, three, and at nine. And then we're going to repeat that on the other card as well. So short side, half inch, uh, four and one eighth, and seven and three quarters. And turn it to the long side, and it's one and three quarters. Three and a half, five and one, two, three, eight, one, two, three, and nine, and that's our scoring. So I can remove this now. And we're gonna, what I'm going to do to this piece now, we're going to repeat with the other piece as well. So, let me bob these out. You're going to need a pencil and a ruler in a moment. I need your little snips and my big snips. So what you're going to do with this bottom piece, because you've got the one and a half, three and a half, and the five and three eighths. <laughs> five, yeah, five and three. What you're going to do is cut up either side of this score line. your little scissors you're just going to remove that little snip for there then we are going to trim up these sides to the score line and then notch a big wedge off this one And the same on the other side. So I'll turn this over. And then notch. Hmm. Sorry about the clanking. I should just move my ruler for a second. <laughs> And then we are going to notch, and now we're going to trim Oops. up these two score lines. Oh, actually, you're going to take these three off on this one, and the same the other side. So your first piece is going to look, and the other piece is going to look, minus these, but added here. <laughs> I'll show you now. So again, cut up this centre score line, either side. It's just so the bottom of the box closes better, and uh, you don't have a wobbly bottom. <laughs> So, we're going to remove all this all the way to the very top and then we're going to stop at the first score line and we're going to slip into that corner and we're going to take that end off as well. You want a good wedge off this side, like that, and we're going to repeat on the other side. So we're going to remove all this, and 
now we're gonna watch. Okay, so one piece is flaps at the top and the other piece has flaps in the middle and this is where they're going to get joined together. So and that, this bit is going to be cut out, this bit, the top, and we're going to do that in a moment with our rulers. So removing your bits. Oops. Now, with this piece, because we've cut the top flaps off, I'm going to do the one with the flaps first at the top. You're going to pop this against your edge, right along there, and this takes you, I'm going to have to move this sign a sec, and this takes you right the way to the eight and a quarter, and this is your... So you're going to now measure in two and one, two, three eighths, but go in between the three eighths and the three and a half in the centre. So you're going to pop your ruler there and you're going to come down to the seven eighths mark and mark. And then you're going to do the same at the six. But you're going to come back, I think it's, uh, I don't know. Do that one in between. Yeah. So now you're going to need one, two, three eighths. And get your one, two, and but then out, don't quote me on this. <laughs> in fact, I might even just turn it over and do it in exactly the same place. You won't see them, so because we're going to cut them out. Let's put a little dot, seven eighths. Ta ta. And while you're there, you're going to get your ruler, keeping it straight, and you're going to make a little mark right on that second score line and the same on this side making sure it's measured up perfect and we're going to be seven eighths and you're going to dot the score line then you're going to move it up um, what eight was he? Three eights, is it? Oops, I can't get my ruler in. And then you're going to, I'd say about half inch. And then that on the other side, we're going to do exactly the same. You'll understand why in a moment. Oh, fingers crossed. <laughs> She says, mm. right, please don't, I am a novice. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm only joking. This is crumb cake, by the way. Um, because we've got it on this side, and then we flip it in, that's right. So now you're going to take your scissors, and you're going to cut from this score line to that point, and then from that point to this score line. If you wanted to, you could use a trimmer. That. Let me have a look, see if I can do with my trimmer. Ooh, fingers crossed. <laughs> so, no, I better hadn't because I can't judge the score line. So, where's my pencil mark? That's my pencil mark. And it looks in the centre. I have to tell you what I'll do while I'm here. Sorry to faff about. One and... So that's one, two, three. I might be wrong actually. Where am I? Yeah, I think I have. One, two, three, and two. 
three and five eighths. So half the three and five eighths <laughs> is one and a half. And one, two. Yeah, that's right. Yes, perfect. So I'm going to trim from this corner. Using my long scissors, I can see the shadow line. And I trim to that dot. If I haven't made it all the way, I'm just going to go back in. I hope you can see what I'm doing. And take it to that dot. The same on this side. Perfect. With this one, we're going to trim from this score line to there. And then from that one to there. I can use my little scissors. I don't want to keep going in with those big ones. Perfect. And now we're going to go and do exactly the same on this side. Perfect, and the same here. Just bend that little flap out of the way. So from the score line up, oops, up to that little dot. And yep. Whoops. And now from this score line, I'm just gonna give it a quick bend. be able to just now remove those bits. Oops. Lay your piece down and don't forget we've got no score lines on here. No flaps on this piece but if you edge that edge to edge and get your pencil you can take your pencil uh, just line it up there, dot there, and dot there, and then we can repeat that process. Sorry for to be a pain, but it will look absolutely gorgeous when you finish. Don't worry if you can still see a little dot, it doesn't matter. Because uh, I'm going to use a rubber to get rid of that. This is why it's handy to have little snips as well. Perfect. Perfect. Now we're going to do the both sides again. And that needs to go just a little fraction more. Yeah. And then this side. Now this side. And this side.
There we go. So we can remove those now. If we line this up like this, it's perfect. It should be. <laughs> the cards not laying flat. That's it. Oops. Corner to corner. It doesn't matter how it's, if it's just out a little fraction. It really doesn't matter, honestly. It will look right. So, ooh, by the way, now we're going to... to measure my half inch so now I'm going to fold the paper give that a bone fold now we're going to cut from that corner to there and to there Ready gone. Ah. It's the cut it out is taking the longest, but because once you've got your box together, and we've glued the sides in a moment, look, look uh, there's your little flat. How cute! All right, we're going to do the same on this side. Uh, I've got to mark my inch, half inch. And I won't bother to mark the other side because we're going to just see it on one side anyway. So, and we're going to cut through the two pieces. So, again, we're going to cut from corner to center and corner to the center. Perfect. Yay! Fingers crossed. <laughs> so now we're going to burnish these, all these score lines. And we're going to fold these back. And then we're going to fold these over. these over uh, I'm going to pull these round and this is the only bit we're going to add tape to this flap this flap and these two flaps here for now just to get the box uh, in shape so I'm adding tear and tape to both sides. For now, and I just burnish them, and I always press it down, make sure the glue is really well and truly stuck to the back. And while we're here, any little pencil lines now we can just remove. What a gorgeous box this is going to be. It's absolutely stunning. So again, on this side, we're going to burnish our score line. And while we're here, if you see any dots, just rub them out. It's not like anyone's going to see that dot because it's going to have some ribbon around it anyway, but... 
Uh, they go like that. This goes like this. And then these are going to have tape on as well. So I grab some more tape. And we've had new neighbors move in. Oof. We've got kids. Oof. I just want a peaceful life. <laughs> Little bits of the tear and tape comes off the back of the snip those away. Push that down. Push this down. And now we're gonna put our box together. Ooh, this is the best bit. <laughs> She says eagerly. And we're going to attach these side pieces first. Probably to it later. So move the back one side at a time, I would do. Fold it under. And line your score line up. Right on the edge. And just press that down. Turn over and repeat. Repeat. Bend this under. Matching up your score line. And sticking down the piece. Our box is coming together. Look. Ooh, two more bits. <laughs> Fingers crossed, I put it right this time. <laughs> I don't know what happened the first time. I did each piece individually measured, but I did have the box deconstructed. Only the bottom bits, so I kept the other bits open, but I think that was my mistake, see. I wanted to call that. And if you've got any glue hanging over, just tuck it back in. And we're going to oops. There we go. Get rid of our rubbish. In the moment of truth. Yay! Love it. So when we put ribbon round there now. And we are going to close our box. There it is. Oh my word. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, I have folded them the wrong way. <laughs> I'm just going to tuck them in. something wrong again. I haven't. I've not tucked it in. That's it. Hey, there we go. <laughs> and I, I'm going to call this the cracker top box. It's just, why does it look so So, right, I'm going to add some tear and tape um, here, here, and here on the outsides, just to keep my box closed. So just the three sides. you in a second. <laughs> it knew it wanted to, needed to come to mommy, so I waved it. <laughs> so I'm going to pop one of these flaps open. And we're always going to, you always seal a box from opening to opening. And you need to put your 
hand inside your can. There's plenty of space. Just like this. I'm just going to line these up. See how removing the score line gives you that perfect edge? No overhang. And then I'm just going to line this edge to edge and seal my lovely little box. Isn't that cute? Lovely. Press down. <laughs> Why? It always looks wonky to me for some reason. I don't know what it is, but. Right. Um, I'm going to take my beautiful ribbon and pop it. I'm going to go forwards first. And then pull this. And then put it around the front. Tie a little bow. What's wrong with that now? It looks a bit skew. Why does it look a bit skew with? <laughs> Oh, I'm sure we'll uh, sauce it out. Put a little bow there for my scissors. Mess around my tails in a moment. And this is the Cherry Cobbler cross-stitched ribbon. Absolutely wonderful. Pull the bows a little bit looser. Oh, it's lovely. It doesn't, it doesn't look a bit skew with, do you? Have I pulled it a bit too tight, perhaps, on one side? Perhaps I have. Right, oh, I do what I know what I need. I'm going to use some cherry cobbler. And I'm going to use, this is going to be three and a half by three and a half. And you need four pieces. So one... I need to get another piece. Oh, I'm grabbing real red here. I should be grabbing, grabbing cherry cobbler. <laughs> so I'm going to take this to three and a half. Actually, I'm going to do it there because it's enough piece. And that gives me loads of leftovers. Three and a half. And three and a half. I know my little box looks a bit wonky at the moment, but I will suss that out and try and get back to you. But I've just wanted to show you the principle of the box. But if anyone of you out there has any, <laughs> gives me any reason or knows of any reason why my little box is wonky, I would love uh, a shout. Get back to me on that one, that'd be great. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Perhaps I'm just... I don't know why that one turned out perfect. Apart from that back little crease. But this one turned out fabulous. Absolutely love it. But this one just looks a bit skew with. Perhaps I've just got one of my score lines wrong. I don't know. But I just wanted to principally show you the box. So... I bet you some of those people, you gorgeous people out there, are way more intelligent than I am. And they come up with some lovely answers for me in the comment box. That'd be great. Because I do sure like this box. It's absolutely fantastic. And if all else fails, I can still eat the chocolates. <laughs> and I'm just using Be Merry Christmas Paper. Because I had it to hand, and I love it against the cherry cobbler. One of my all-time favourite colours. I love cherry cobbler, real red, night of navy. I love that name. I love them all. I love all stamping up colours. Uh, I wasn't too fast on always artichoke, but do you know what? After using it, it is absolutely wonderful. Wonderful colour. So last piece, before it dries. <laughs> oh, well, if you don't laugh, you cry. 
and then we can attach them to my wonky box. Perhaps I've just pulled this a bit too tight. Perhaps if I undo it slightly, pull it. Oops. And more fingers and thumbs. That's better. Perhaps it's just. I know where I've gone wrong. See here? This diamond's way bigger than this diamond. So I think I need, I should have really turned the card over so the diamonds were all the same size. That's where I'm going wrong. Oh, I do apologize. Turn, instead of having the two cards flat together, make sure the diamonds are twisted. That way it will sit way better. Because you can see that that one is definitely wider than that one. Yeah, they all need to sit. They need that gap on both sides. And that's where I've gone wrong. I can see it now. Because my whole box itself is perfect apart from that. My mistake, I will rectify that. And uh, I, don't, I won't put any measurements up until I really suss that out. Um, because I don't want to give you false measurements and you go away and make the same mistake I have made. So I'm just going to decorate this beautiful little box, which is so cute. Yeah, I can see it straight away as soon as I opened it. Because they fit, that fit side fits perfect. They, this one is now twisted to try and keep itself in. So I'm going to have to make this a little bit bigger. I think what it is, is with the gap on my original box, it was only something like three eighths. And I've gone over to half inch, which is totally messed up this measurement. So it needs to come down here a bit more. So what I might do is open my box and just cut that angle a little bit wider. And then pull this one back on the next box. Yes, definitely. I know where I've gone wrong. I do apologise, people. My lovely friends. I don't want to steer anybody wrong. That's a lovely tight bit. Whoops, wiggle space. Yeah, because this is three and five eighths, and this cherry cobbler is cut at three and a half, is literally only one eighth of a difference, which is nice. And I was going to, uh, I was going to stamp the top of my box, but I haven't got round to that. I'm getting too carried away with the measurements. <laughs> so, one more to go. Check the time. Oh, whoa, my word, my phone is going to stop in any minute. I'm just going to show you these sides and show you my label again on this one. I used a piece of gold foil with the starburst and the two inch circum punch and stamped wrapped in the warmth of Christmas. Absolutely lovely. Um, let me check the time. Oh, I might have time to do my sentiment. Um, so I've got my gold foil sheet. Punch one of those out. I have my whisper bite, and I'm going to punch one of those out. And I've got my beautiful cherry cobbler. Yes, yeah, see, I had these stamps out. I was going to stamp these with snowflakes and this little swirl pattern, but. Uh, I was more concerned about getting my measurements right that I ended up messing it up anyway, but uh, isn't that beautiful? Love it. Love, love, love. So gonna add a bit of tumble on the back. Perfect little gold trim around the outside. Absolutely wonderful. I'm going to add some dimensionals to the back. 
I do apologise about that. It's the, only the second one I've made. I am going to make sure I get it perfect next time. And I'll probably come back with a, as a smaller version of this box. But with the same opening. It's just so cute. Cute, cute, cute. When you make your box, if you decide to make one, just make sure you, your triangles on both sides are uh, wide. I think I'm going to have to come in maybe to that 5 eighths. I will probably undo the bottom and rectify that. Now you're going to pick the front of your box, which is entirely up to you once you've got it in. Pop on your lovely sentiment. Have a, grab a few rhinestones. Pop them wherever you fancy. And I'll pop one on my other box as well. Just so cute. There we go. I mean, I'm going to rectify that shortly. Um, but I just principally wanted to show you the top opening of the box. And then I end up getting it wrong. <laughs> Sorry. But I will rectify it. And I will show you it on another video. Once I've got it bang on, and I'll tell you what I did. But I hope you liked it. Um, you can buy all the supplies from my online shop if you visit my um, blog at www.stampwithjoy.co.uk. And in there, there's the little shop now button. But I will put a list of all the supplies. And uh, if you click on that item, it will take you straight to that item in my shop. But thanks for watching. Thumbs up, share, and don't forget to subscribe and press the little button, uh, the little bell afterwards, and that way you'll be notified of any future videos. Sorry to rush, people, but my time is up. Love you all. Bye.